Hi guys, welcome to Sunday Fun Day. We got a great host today. No, a great guest. I'm the host. I have a great guest today. My, I'm um, kind of like, I've been following Joey and Holly Baird. Well, Joey's going to be the one on today. But I've been following, follow, uh, following Joey since when I first started uh, watching gardening on YouTube. Besides Luke and the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners, it's like, to me, this is like, well, this is a superstar today, so I'm I'm really excited to have them on. Um, people are starting to roll on in. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome on in. All questions, I'll say this again a little bit, all questions saved to the end, saved to the end of the chat. Um, we've been nearing 100 every single chat the last couple of weeks, so hopefully, uh, you know, it's a busy gardening time. A lot of stuff's going on. A lot of stuff with the family's going on, and... Uh, we're going to get a lot more people later on in the chat. Anyway, the four channels we're going over today is the Stock Explorer, Gail Southern Living, Disabled and Prepping, and Bob942. Just let you guys, next week we're going to have a little bit of a different format. Um, you know how we do those channels reviews, like the four channels we're going over today? Well, we're going to go over three channels next week, and each channel is going to be live. So it's going to be, for example, the Indiana Backyard Gardener. I'm going to have them on for five minutes. Let her talk about her show, what she's growing and things like that. And if you guys like that, go ahead and follow her. And then 8.15, we'll do another. Or 8.30, we'll do another. It's going to be 15, every 15 minutes before we do the wheel. And I think that's pretty cool to have somebody on live talking about their channel and help them grow as a channel. Because that's what this channel is, helping people grow, help people uh, you know, expand their channels and we all can learn from each other um next sunday is the last time we could register for the secret santa halfway oh, where's my uh, he's gone over there somewhere anyway secret santa 23 for the summer which is in july next week's the last week to register so go to the registration video if you're um want to learn more about it uh, membership start at 99 cents which is zucchini club all the way to Jelly Bean and Superhero and Joseph's Journey. So check that out. And, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff's going on in this channel. A lot of great uh, – it's the little things. We always talk about little things in gardening. It's the little things on the channel too. And I really appreciate the new members, uh, new people on the chat. Welcome in. And, well, we're going to welcome the Wis Joey from the Wisconsin Family Gardener. There he is. Welcome in, Joey. How you doing? Doing well. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. So at the end of uh, the chat, well, any kind of questions, you guys, Joey will be, he'll love to answer them. <laughs> Do what I he's, can. he's been doing this for a long time. Now, how long have you had your YouTube show? We started YouTube in, oh, late, mid, mid fall of 2013, or 20, uh, 20, I guess it was 2011, 2013, somewhere in there. It's been a long time. We started with one video, I think it was 2011. And then now we're upwards of over 2,000 videos. Wow. Now, what, what, what made you start doing a YouTube? Holly and I both worked at a warehouse. I worked in the warehouse. She worked in the customer service department. And there was a contest in which if you upsold and all you had to do was ask the, the customer, would you like to buy an additional whatever? Uh, whoever did the most of those got a little... Kodak camera, video camera. And she won and she said, what are we going to do with this? And I said, I guess we'll make YouTube videos, not knowing anything about anything. And that uh, 12, 13 years later, we're still doing it. And we bought more of those little cameras and they work very well. They're, they look like a cell phone, mm -hmm. um, but they, they work very well. And uh, we, we continue to make YouTube videos and very handy to maneuver around. That, that's how it started. Now, who is your biggest influence on YouTube? There is many of them. They've come and gone. Um, we've all seen Luke from MI Gardener, and we all have our own opinion of whether we think he's good or bad or or wherever there is. He obviously is somebody that many people look up to. We look up, we look at a lot of people, and not so much whether we like them or not. It, it's and we'll talk about this in a minute. It's kind of like our radio show. I listen to people. Not because I agree with their political stance or their personal stance, but I listen to them on how they deliver the information. 
Hmm. That's the key. How do you deliver the information to capture the audience, to inform the audience, and to get the audience to come back? So there, there's been many good and bad influencing uh, YouTubers that I've watched and Holly and I've watched that said, we like what they're doing. We're going to do that better. Or we don't like what they're doing. We're certainly not going to do that because that's not working for them. You know, I like I love listening to the college, their gardening, you know, their gardening stations and stuff like that. And listening to the professors right? and listening what they have to say, because I didn't go to car college for gardening. I just been gardening since I was. You know, seven years old, six years old. Mm -hmm. And I learned from an old farmer and that's how I got into it. Uh, but watching you, these, you learned in a way that books couldn't teach you. Yeah. Old, old school, mm -hmm. <laughs> hard work. Yeah. <laughs> it's all still hard work. It's all hard work, but it's, it's, it's special. But listen to the, the professors talk. I kind of lose track once in a while. You know, they're talking. It's like, what are they even talking about? <laughs> but you know what? That's the little thing. That's the little thing. We're always learning, right? Mm -hmm. I'm always learning and gardening, and I've been doing it for forever. People are older than me, same exact way. And so it's important just to, I always say, put stuff in your pocket. Right. You know, even if you agree with it or don't don't agree with it, hey, it could be, might be right five years from now. You know, maybe not. Right. And And those... Some people in the gardening world have the tendency to flaunt, hey, I know all the Latin words for these vegetables. There's seven other people in the world that know those words or those names, and that's not going to help anybody right now. Give exactly. the common name because that's how the information is going to be easily shared rather than some Latin name that, that you want to boast that you know about. And that's great. You know about it, but it's not helping the, the larger population if you're trying to share information. I look at the Latin names and I just go, whoop, throw it away. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's really, it really, I'm looking at it. I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time. It's a cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> what kind yeah. of cucumber? But I'm not going more into a cucumber. Right. That's <laughs> so funny. Um, now, tell us about your radio show. Our radio show, we are we have just started our seventh season. Holly and I started this radio show kind of by accident, like many great things in life. You can see on the screen there, we are in parts of 26 states on 20 different AM and FM radio frequencies. That's uh, on our website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. And then also under the season seven tab, it has the times in which our shows are broadcast. Uh, we do our show in a house, in studio, in our home studio. We started in 2016. Uh, we were trying to do it in 2015 for 2016. And we had posted on a local Milwaukee, that's where we're out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a local Milwaukee gardening group. And somebody said, well, you should be on the radio. So Holly and I, who have no radio experience whatsoever, said, OK, let's try this because I'm sure this will, you know, we tried it and it did not end well. We tried in fall of 2015 for 2016. We got a hold of a station that said that they would house, would hold the show and told us how much we need to raise. And with all of our stations, we have to pay the airtime and the sponsors pay the fee to be on the show to advertise in order for us to pay the airtime. So when we made 1% of the overall cost to be on the show on, on the station in Milwaukee in, for 2016, and it didn't end well, it, it, we failed miserably. In January of 2016, I got laid off of a, out, of the, out of a job that I had for about seven, eight years, got a nice severance pay and all that. And I said to Holly, maybe we should try this radio thing one more time. And she's like, no. And I said, let's try it one more time. If it doesn't work, we're not meant to have it. Well, we kind of learned from a few people. Uh, we reached out to uh, Mike Novak. He was out of Chicago at that time. Nikki Jabor, she was out of Nova Scotia at that time. Both are, no longer have radio programs. Um, Doug Oster, I, we reached out to him. He's out of Pittsburgh. He still has a radio program and said, here's what we want to do. You've done it very successfully. What's kind of the, some of the things that we need to be aware of? And they informed us. So we kind of took their advice and started reaching out to companies, started building a personal database of companies. And for 20, the, that year of 2016, for 2017, we obtained 18 companies that said, hey, we'll take a chance on you. 
and we raised the money and we were on the air one station in Milwaukee. Mm. And then in 20 for 2019, I said to Holly, well, we could sit in Milwaukee for 20, 30 years, like some of these very successful radio garden hosts are in their own city. But if we're going to do this, let's go crazy and let's try to do as big as we can. So in 2019, we reached out. We were in Philadelphia. We picked up Southeast Michigan. We were in Banning, California, which that was a challenge because they're in zone nine. Everybody else is in zone four and five and six. So we had to maneuver how we conversated about certain topics. And then in 2020 and 2021, we picked up more stations, lost, uh, dropped some, picked some more up based on the markets we were wanting to get in and how much the station was going to cost. We determined those stations based on our analytics through our podcast of the previous year's shows. We had always been popular in Boston, in Boston and in Minneapolis. Uh, so those were always guaranteed markets that we were going to be in. Now we've always been on one station, WCRN 830 out of Boston, and we've switched a couple of times in Minneapolis to, to get on lower cost stations, but better presentation of our program on those stations. Mm. Um, so we are 20 in parts of 26 states on 20 AM and FM radio stations. I think this is about the max that we're going to be able to do just with Holly and I. Uh, there's not a whole lot more that two people can do and still have a quote unquote somewhat normal life without being 24 seven this, even though we're as YouTubers and gardeners, we're kind of 24 seven always. This is another level of 24 seven that we knew was going to happen, but this is about the max that we're going to do. Unless some station comes in and says, Hey, we'll run your show for nothing. Let, you know, which doesn't happen anymore. Um, that, that, that was eighties and nineties. That doesn't exist. Stations just run your program and they fill in the blanks with their advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's, Really neat that we are able to reach so many people each week in March through October. Um, when this all starts each year, I with the radio app, I kind of check to make sure the show's airing on, on the stations. And there's always at least one or two that we have problems and they have to fix it and broadcast it later on in the week to get the um, required plays that we've contracted with them. So a quick story, two quick stories. Denver, the station at Denver, Aurora the Rockies, KF, KHNC 1360, was supposed to air the program 7 to 8 a.m. on Saturday mornings and replay 4 to 5. That was what we agreed upon. That was what the contract was. It didn't air. So I reached out. It's Saturday morning. Nobody's in any office. Nobody's at the station. Anyway, long story short, I get a hold of the girl out of the Phoenix office, which is their headquarters, and she said, here's the problem. We're, we're going to have to bump you from 7 to 11 because so many people are calling the station because they want to hear you, but they can't because it's too early in the morning. I said, okay, if that's all the problem we've got, let's put it at 11 o'clock and let it run. <laughs> Boston was the same way. It was supposed to run 8 to 9 on Saturday mornings and 5 to 6 on Sunday mornings. Right. And, and I got a hold of him, and he said, here's the problem. If we had three days in a weekend, I'd run your show two hours every day. I can't. I'm getting just inundated about people wanting to hear your show. So they run at 6 to 8 Saturday mornings and 6 to 8 Sunday mornings, the same show back to back, back to back, back to back. Um, so I'm not aware that we were that popular, but I, I appreciate that and take it honorably. And, uh, we are only as good as the last show we did. So we always are trying to be, and just like YouTube videos, we are always trying to be better, present our information, uh, more simply, but not insultingly because people come on the program. We've got people that listen to Doing and Garden because they just like how Holly and I interact. Um, I love the interaction. Totally love the interaction between you guys. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. When you've been with somebody, either married or working with somebody for so long, you know when they stop talking. You know before they stop talking when they're going to stop talking. And you're already planning what you're going to say in, in rebuttal to their conversations. Mm -hmm. um, just like when she records me, I'm typically in front of the camera on YouTube videos. She knows where I'm about to end the conversation, how to pan away or how to do certain things just because that's what sh we've worked together for so long so well. And um, it, it, it's very nice to have that communication because you've, I'm sure you're listening to and, and the viewers have listened to radio programs where they have no business being on the air because it's horrible. There's, it's just the chemistry's not there. They're stepping on top of one another. One person's talking about 
blue sky and the other person's talking about tire repair. You know, there, there, nothing's meshing. Uh, and it's really a turnoff and you just it, you just can't listen to it. So true. Now, your sponsors, right? Yes. Talk about some of your sponsors here, because some people might have never heard any of these sponsors. So since we're here, might as well okay. talk a little bit about them. Waltons, they have a coupon code. They are out of central, the Midwest. They have everything but the meat. They uh, butchering tools, seasoning, spices, casings, anything you want to do with butchering or seasoning your meat. They have it. They just don't sell the meat. And you would think that's kind of odd for a gardening program. But they have seen quite a good return on investment. And this is going 2023 is their third year with us. Fleet Farm, that is a local Midwest uh, farm store. They're, they've got 48 locations in six or seven different states. Blue Ribbon Organic, they are a local uh, Milwaukee composting company. Deer Defeat, they're nationwide. They're online only. They have all kinds of deer uh, repellent, animal repellent, deer, rabbit, and groundhog repellent. Works well. Wonderful. Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, they have uh, spreaders, uh, fertilizer spreaders, and, and pump sprayers. Um, Aqua Pond, uh, AAA uh, Pond Supply, they have anything you need for your water landscaping. Soil Savvy at SoilSavvy.com, they have soil testing kits so you can tell what's going on with your soil. Wind River Chimes, handcrafted chimes in uh, for 35 years, beautiful, unique uh, wind chimes. Winchester, uh, Wisconsin Gar Greenhouse Company, they're out of Madison, they service um, Wisconsin. Pro Plugger, they are a, they, they're a neat tool that creates quick holes for planting. Tree Diaper, you can water your trees, plant shrubs with no hoses that, or, or uh, mechanisms. It recharges when you water or it rains. Rootmaker.com, grow bags and starter trays, they have been with us since day one. They're, they've been with us for seven years on the radio show and two years prior when we just did a podcast off the dining room table. They've been with us for since the very beginning. So very impressed that they and very uh, happy that they are continuing to support the program. Dripping Springs Oyas. Oyas work really well as a watering mechanism. We get all of our seeds from Jung Seeds. They are out of Wisconsin, but they ship nationwide. There's coupon code there. Happy Leaf, American Made Grow Lights out of Chicago, small batches. Tree hugger sprinklers, uh, unique three sizes in which you can water your shrubs, trees, or bushes and vegetables with. Nat Green products, they have no more bugs, an organic bug repellent and organic weed killing products. Verlo mattresses, they're out of uh, the Milwaukee area. Farmers Defense, they have hats, aprons, and those uh, sleeves in which you can keep your irritation down on your skin. Promona pectin for pectin. Bloom and Easy Plants, uh, from, uh, Phylum Bioproducts, they have uh, for Japanese beetles and grubs, uh, the natural organic way in order to control them. Grip6 has the uh, grip6.com, American made socks, belts, and wallets. Best socks you're ever going to find. Just personal endorsement there. Raised garden beds. It's a technology which runs off an app. You can grow a lot of food indoors. Drip work, irrigation system, mantis tillers uh, for your tilling needs. And that's uh, what we've got. And those are podcast replays of the previous shows. Awesome. So there was a lot there very quickly, but if you go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, everything is there and all are clickable links to uh, the each, each of their websites. I wasn't going to show that originally, but like, you know, this is a good idea. You know, it's your show. You're, you know, it's, it's you. This is, this is, these are people that support you in your right. show. So, Hey, let's show it, you know? Yeah. I think um, that's great. But, well, but and, and one thing people are, are when we talk to people, they're like, Oh, you've got to pay for the show. We, and yeah, they're, unless we were syndicated through Westwood one or iHeartRadio or something like that, that was a network deal. This is called, I forget, there's some industry term for what we do, but we're an independent show that we pay, pay for the airtime. As long as we follow FCC rules and laws, the, the hour is ours. Hmm. Now, now is a time where people, they go to the garden center or Home Depot. And I know there's a huge disparity there, you know, as a longtime gardener, but if a person went to Home Depot, what would you suggest if you went to <laughs> a garden center or Home Depot? 
would you call that person going to Home Depot kind of nuts going there? <laughs> Un uneducated because they're not aware that the, the resources that an independent garden center can provide you. Now, do they also add, put more fertilizer in their plants if you go to a Home Depot to try to make it look better? Even some independent garden centers will up the fertilizer to present, make the presentation better, or as office viewers know, present the money beats. You got to put the pretty stuff up front. Uh, typically, a good independent garden center will fertilize the plants according to the recommend, recommend, recommended rates and won't over fertilize the plant. So when you get it home, it's not going to go in a shock whenever you try to put it in your garden or container. Um, the difference between independent garden center and Home Depot is Home Depot doesn't care what you buy. Bob from paint will come over and sell you anything that you want to buy. Independent garden center, good ones will keep you from buying things that you don't need. And they would much rather lose the sale of a rose plant or rose bush rather than have you buy one for 40 or 50 or $60, get it home, it not do well where you were wanting to plant it. And then you're frustrated and you're like, I'm not going back because they sold me a plant that died. Mm. <laughs> you have to know where, because that when we have, we have an independent garden center that we visit quite frequently and there you can hear the staff talking to other people where well, you're wanting to buy this, but where are you wanting to plant this? Well, I want to plant it here. That's not going to work because that is a shade tolerant plant, not a full sun plant or whatever the, you know, the verbiage is. Um, so they, they are very knowledgeable. And with an independent garden center, if Sarah doesn't know, Sarah knows Tom may know, and if Tom doesn't know, Jim might be able, they have a chain of command in which they can find the answer to the question that you have. So you get the right information and buy the right plant for what you intend to put in your yard. Now, what are some of the plants you should buy at a garden center and some of the plants they should never buy at a garden center? Well, let's start with what you shouldn't buy at the garden center first. You've got the three or four inch cups, uh, anything like sweet corn or beets or carrots or radishes or green beans or squashes or watermelons, because that's that is a instant, you know, oh, they've got green beans, they've got watermelon. I don't have to plant it. If you put if you're able to get that watermelon or squash out of the container without damaging the roots to the point where it's going to die and you put seed in the ground at the same time you are planting that squash in about four to six weeks they're going to be about the same size and all you're doing is the pack of seeds from we from jungs is a fraction of the cost of what a plant start is at your garden center at our garden center last year a pepper plant was going at six and a half dollars for one four inch pepper plant <laughs> yes and i'm sure this year, i'm sure this year we're going to see seven plus why not everything else is going up why not so with a pack of seeds, you can plant a lot for $7 when a pack of seeds is only two and a half and you get 20 or 30 seeds in that container or even more. Um, and you see people um, buy these things, take them home, green beans, for example. There's five green beans in a container. You get them home. You try to tear them apart gently. You've killed four and a half of them before you even a week is out. And then you're mad because the thing didn't live and you think you're a terrible gardener. Well, they've set you up to fail because they're going to you're going to go back and probably buy more because the first five didn't work in the container you bought for X amount of dollars. Things that you should buy or is OK to buy at your garden center is single plant containers, peppers, eggplants, um, romaine lettuce. Sometimes they'll come in one pack deal or a six pack. Anything in a single cell, one plant is probably the safest bet to go. You don't want to have things that are just all grown together in a little four inch pot that you're trying to sort out because damaged roots, plants are not, plants don't like the roots to be damaged. Uh, and squashes are a very sensitive root, rooted plant. So uh, be cautious. And if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, even though they're trying to sell it to you. It cracks me up some because some vegetables are so easy to start outside. Mm -hmm. But people are not aware of that. And yes, very not aware. And like spinach, what are you doing? <laughs> or uh, beets, so easy to grow. I just put them out there, you know. Now, beets can be done in a container. We've done beets and corn in a container. I think we've showed it on videos. We do it because we wanted to see how realistic it was. And it worked 
but it's far much easier to wait till that soil temperature is the adequate temperature that is required and just put them in the ground. Don't have to transplant, don't have to fiddle with them, plant them, water them, weed them, and wait. I like pole beans. I love growing pole beans. Got so little space. You grow so much. Uh, I think growing pole beans are great. What's mm -hmm. the easiest thing to put in a garden? Like, why are you even starting? Just put them in the ground. Right. You know, I mean, they don't take that long. It's not like a tomato week, tomato plant where it takes seven weeks to, right. you know, under grow lights. So it just cracks me up with but, but what people, people, people should grow or not. People are not aware of this. They think if it's at the garden center in a container, it's okay. It must be fine to, to grow, to buy and plant when they haven't done their due diligence and found out that, Hey, maybe it's, I can, radishes take 30 days. Why are we buying them? And you know, the, the root crop is very fidgety and they don't like their roots to be damaged with the exception of leeks and onions. Those you can buy at the garden center, plant them right away. They're fine. Outside of those, you don't want to buy anything that's a root crop and you buy and then try to transplant. Yeah, carrots. That's 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 big thing. Carrots. Right. Never grow carrots. Never buy carrots at a, at a I've seen a YouTube video, and this was many years ago. They started carrots in paper towel in the paper towel method. And then they took tweezers and moved each one of them into like a single cell tray. And then they were going to transplant them out in the garden. And I couldn't watch the video. I, I got very <laughs> angry at the video. And I couldn't watch it. Now, this is something interesting because I never really, I've seen people talk about it, but I've never seen like the whole process. But you using pine straw okay. as a mulch in a garden. Now, the pine straw, it's, it has different pH factors, mm -hmm. correct? So, and what is it, around a 3.5 or something like that? On the tree, it's a 3.5, yes. And so whenever you use it in the garden it will it takes very long for pine needles to break down so by the time it breaks down into a soil compo a compostable form it has neutralized um to the point where it, it's not going to affect your your soil at all and during the breakdown process it's not going to alter the ph level if you're going to incorporate pine needles into your compost pile, you want to do no more than 10% of overall volume because of the time it takes for the needles to break down. We've used them as mulch on top. They work very well. They don't break down like leaves that if we put mulch around our tomatoes in a Memorial Day weekend by you know, middle of August or so, another 60 days, the, the leaves have broke down to where you didn't know you put anything there. Um, the pine needles will last all season long, and then you can either work them in the soil the next spring or just move them out of the way and plant another plant on top of them. They don't, they don't break down and they don't uh, hurt your soil. Um, and they work very well to retain moisture. So they help to retain moisture, but how about like this weeds, you really suppress the weeds? With Nothing any wrong? type, with any type of mulch, there is a certain percentile of suppression However, there's always some weeds that do find their way out, but it does greatly reduce the amount of weeds in which, whether pine needles or straw or leaves, any type, anytime you cover the soil, there is a, 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 a percentile of suppression of weeds that you don't get if you just have bare soil. And by covering the soil, you're holding the moisture, you're reducing some of the weeds that come up, and you're keeping the soil healthier. Nothing in nature is exposed that has soil. Everything that has soil, there's some type of covering, whether it's leaves in the in the um, woods or prairie grass in the openness, there's always something covering that soil. And that's what we need to mimic in our gardens, that covering that soil makes that soil healthier. You, you'll come out in the spring here and you'll see a place where there was no soil coverage and the soil looks very bare and burnt and dried out compared to if you open or uncover some that was mulched, how much healthier that soil looked. And there's insects crawling around underneath the leaves and underneath the mulch. So we want to try to take a lesson from nature to make our gardens better. As I say, if there's life in the soil, you got life in a garden. Yes. You know, you know what? I'm going to show you something too. Because my life in my soil, I expanded my garden two years ago, but then I ran through a lot of problems. I never really had to work on the soil, work it as the soil. It's more very sandy surface okay so i'm trying to get worms in the back and everything can't find any i can't there's no worms it's that's amazing 
anyway, but we do have a lot of trees beyond my property. So I have leaves. I have pine. I have, there's so many resources I could put down. But I wanted to add stuff to my soil. So usually I, I do make a registration video today, uh, which I did. But I like using, I like going to nature's good guys, which is this. Because I really have, I want to add the good beneficial insects to fight the bad ones. Mm -hmm. So we can, they can have a, you know, just like a marriage today, sort of in a way. They could dance. Right. <laughs> right. So um, what I'm doing is under the surface, I'm putting tons of leaves, some branches, you know, some kind of a growing method where I could make sure I keep moisture in the ground. Because I work, I'm actually work, I work about 18 hours a day. If I want to get home, I'm outside in the garden. That leaves me two, three hours sleep. So I want to keep as much moisture in the ground. So I got some uh, red worms mm -hmm. from Wigglers. And so I'm adding those to my leaves and stuff like that. And that's going to help with the create worm castings and create a better soil surface. I also got some stuff for the greenhouse. I got my ladybugs because I want to stop getting, I want to, you know, you have aphids. There you go. Fight, right. baby, fight. And since I have a, like a large, uh, we have actually 14 acres behind our house. And they, 10 of those acres became houses. So a lot of animals are starting to come in our direction because they want they want to find a home. I also got a prey mantis. Okay. So I've been adding these prey mantis and every, I've been adding every single year. It's amazing. I know they're not the Carolina prey mantis, which is you want. Uh, these are the Chinese prey mantis, which eat everything. Uh, but I want to eat the bad bugs. Right. So that's, that's to me, that's very much of a kid. Um, do you add anything to your garden or do you, how do you create a happy home if you do? Because um, they need a happy place. If they don't, they just fly away. We don't add anything. We add leaves and we add homemade compost. We have, we have in years past added a lot of used coffee grounds. Uh, we got them free from coffee shops. You bring a five gallon bucket in, they fill it up. Now this was pre, pre the pandemic and we know how the world has changed since then for the good and the bad. Um, but we would just take five gallon buckets of coffee filters and grant, uh, coffee grounds and a five gallon bucket would do, we put 30, 30 square feet, 40 square feet with one five gallon bucket and just gently worked it in. And the key to the coffee grounds is they have about 2% nitrogen, half percent phosphorus, half percent uh, potassium. If you don't work them in, that nitrogen evaporates into the atmosphere. So you got to get it under the soil or throw a mulch on top of it. And that has helped quite a bit to bring in worms. And worms can go as far as eight feet below the surface of the soil and they create caverns. And that's why we don't want to, and worms are just one of many uh, insects under the soil, life of the soil that we don't want to purposely or intentionally till in order to, because we're messing up their whole ecosystem, which really benefits uh, the plants in which we're trying to grow. I understand there's some soil disturbance that has to be done, whether weed removal or you're planting artichokes or potatoes, Drew's on artichokes or, or potatoes or something like that. But going in there and tilling the soil up like an agricultural field, some people swear by it and they do it every day and, and, and think it's wonderful. There's much science out there that proves that that can actually be more detrimental to the life of the soil than minimal or no soil disturbance. Hmm. And just for let you guys know, if you guys went to Home Depot and wanted coffee grounds, they'll be sure to give them to you because they have to dispose of those. And what we here, just take them. Take yeah. them. People, Star they Starbucks, has a, Starbucks has a program where you can ask for them and, and they come in a, a little, little bag, it's, hmm. but it's free. So that's that's okay. Freeze, freeze, good. Right. We're gardening. Right. We need things by the cheap. We get out. Um, what kind of potting mix do you use, or do you use a clean compost, perlite? Like what kind of what kind of growing method? Say for tomatoes, what do you do? You use a solo cup. Like how do you start off your plants? We start our plants with a just a local. Uh, we've got a garden center, and they just have a local brand potting soil mix that has a slow release fertilizer that releases over 90 days and a water retention mechanism in it. And then we take that and mix it with our homemade compost um, about 50-50. So we can stretch the potting soil and the free compost that we've made. We can extend the life of the potting soil. We start our seeds, our tomato seeds or pepper seeds in solo red cups. 
for two purposes. One, space saving. You can take one solo cup and put about 10 start seeds in there. And if everything works well, you're going to have 10 seeds come up. If not, you're going to have five to eight seeds come up. So once they get three or four inches tall, we will take that solo cup and then remove those plants and put them in our root maker uh, grow trays that air prune the roots. They have the 18, a 32, 64, and 128 cells. We use the 18 for the, the tomatoes, the 32 cell for the peppers. And they have strategic um, slits in the trays, in each tray, in each cell that air prunes the roots. We're typically familiar with root bound plants and the, the roots just keep spiraling. Then happen with the root maker trays. They air prune the roots and you have just mass amounts of root fibers. So when you put it in the ground, you don't have to tease the roots. It goes right in the ground and it works very well. But in the start, if you're starting 80 or 100 or 150 tomato plants, that's a lot of trays. Oh, yeah. If you have solo cups, you're condensing that down. And then when it's time to up pot or move them to the trays, you're able to be selective and it's okay to kill plants. You're not a good gardener unless you killed about a thousand plants. Um, <laughs> and then you can move them to your trays and then you have 18 or 32 pristine plants that you're going to maintain until it's time to harden them off and put them in the ground. Now, I love the root mat. I, you know, I never bought from that company before. I'm really intrigued by uh, their system, how they use it, because mm -hmm. everything gets root bound. You know, you yeah. do these little things, you run out a little bit of time. If you're, you have a full-time job, that's a full-time job too. Right. You know, so I like that. And, and that company, when we reached out to them in 2014, that was, that all was in, uh, invented for in 1968 for trees, for propagating trees to keep the trees from getting root bound in the containers. So I reached out to the company and said, hey, here's who we are. This would work great in vegetables. And they said, yeah, it would. And then they've been with us ever since. And we've, we're still using those original trays that we got seven, eight, nine years ago. And the grow bags have been sitting outside, most of them, for that long. And they're no problem at all. They're white uh, coating on the grow bags, which helps repel, repel the heat instead of absorbing like some of the black grow bags do. The only thing with the white grow bags, don't put them in the washing machine. That white coating comes right off. I've done it, so you don't have to. <laughs> now, you said you uh, you get your seeds from junk seeds. Yes. Uh, how long have you been buying from them? We've been buying from them on and off for about a decade, and they uh, came on as a sponsor. This will be their second year, and then we have a coupon code uh, to get 10% off your order. Um they are a Wisconsin company, but they ship nationwide and they've got a large selection of heirloom, organic uh, and hybrid seeds. And we've had very good success with them. Just want to let you go. We've been having about 75, 80 people in the chat. Guys, thank you, everyone, for coming today. I really appreciate it. Um, now, fighting aphids and white flies and vine borers, what's, what's, you see these insects. What's the best way to say bye-bye? <laughs> Aphids, if you've got them on your seedlings, the best way that we found is to, in, a, in a 10 by 20 flat is to spray them with soapy water or hit them with uh, a hose and that will dislodge and knock a lot of them off. But just soapy water, dish soap with a, in, in a, either a squirt bottle or a pump sprayer, that works quite well. Uh, it, getting ladybugs into your garden, if you've already got them in there, is a, a, a key now whether you choose to buy them or you naturally have them in there in your in your vicinity um, either way if you see them on let's say a pepper plant and uh, they're only infestating one pepper plant or one portion of a pepper plant there's two options one take off that chunk of the pepper plant and get rid of it burn it throw it in the trash or let it be because that is the host plant and we have found in years past where our peppers and eggplants and tomatoes were not touched by aphids, but we had some lamb quarters that we didn't weed and they were four or five foot tall and the plants were just covered with aphids. So that was the host plant. So we just let things be. So sometimes either being lazy or not having enough time to weed, certain plants emerge from your garden in which becomes the host plant for your insects that are most likely would eat your vegetables, but are eating the weed instead. Uh, white flies, there are different formulations of either chemicals you can buy online or buy or, in, or 
are homemade remedies in which you can make. We've not in experienced the white fly issue outside as much as we did a couple of years ago when we had a grow tent and that was a disaster because we didn't have the best soil. So that was where that issue came from. Mm. A good balance of good bugs and bad bugs. It's not a bad thing to have a few aphids or a few white flies or a few insects in your garden that are not supposed to be there because you've got ladybugs and you've got uh, birds and you've got other good things that are eating those bad bugs. It's a harmony. You got to have a little bit of both. Um, what was the squash vine borer? Is that that was the other yes. thing? Yes. The only way we've had pumpkins. The only way we've had acorn squash and spaghetti squash and zucchini is by being aware of the signs of the plant being attacked by the squash vine bore. A butternut squash, you don't have to worry about. It's too thick of a stem for it to, to do anything with. But at the time, as the plant's growing, you want to look at the base. And at the base, uh, three or four inches up, you're going to see if it is being attacked. You're going to see uh, honeydew or what they call a sap that will come out of the, the plant where it's been bored into. At that point, you're going to have to do surgery in order to save your plant. You're going to have to cut it open on one side and you're going to see the worms start coming out, the the the, 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 the worms, and you're going to have to excavate, uh, remove them and then let that be. An open wound, as long as you don't sever the plant, an open wound, you can cover it back over with some compost. But when you see that, it looks like somebody put a, a drill bit in there and sawdust came out. That's where the moth has come in and burled the eggs in there. And the larva is growing inside and eating the internal portions out of your plant and killing it. If the plant is already wilting, it looks like it needs water. That is also a sign in which you need to get in there immediately and cut the two or three inches up on that stem and open it up. And you're going to see the worms. If, you, that, if you've seen that, it's more than times than not too late because the plant is already in the dying stages because the plant has already got the main artery severed in the stem. So we surgically, we watch diligently and we do surgery and that's how we've ended up getting a good crop of spaghetti squash, uh, uh, acorn squash, spaghetti, uh, zucchini, because we cut that open and get those larvae out year after year. And the odd thing about it is we may have zucchini 10 feet away that's not even touched. Uh, but the three over here are affected, but the three over there are not. Mm -hmm. But the surgery, uh, that's the key. One of the things that helped me, but I, I was more of an experiment, is using peppermint. Okay. So if you pot peppermint and put it in the plant and you see the, if you see the uh, bottom exposed of the zucchini plant where you can put the plant next to it, do it. Try it out. It messes but if up you the don't, aroma in the air if the, the moth can't find the zucchini. Is that what I'm understanding? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so they smell a peppermint, they can't get in there, and they don't like to smell peppermint. So that's something I'm going to try actually do a video on this year and see what the results is. But you want to keep it in a container because that peppermint will spread and you'll never get it out of your garden. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, definitely got to put it in a container. Um, you guys have any questions, start writing them down because uh, we're almost going to be done here. So you guys can answer any kind of – Joey, we answer as best as you can. Um Anything new you want to try in your garden this year? Not necessarily new, but better. We want to focus more on weed removal early. As many of us, we, oh, we're going to get it tomorrow and we never get to it. And the weeds become this and that and the whole mess. Uh, weed removal, um, better green beans. We had a good crop two years ago. Last year was very weak and not very good. Uh, we used to try new things in the garden each year, like a new plant, but we found what really works. Uh, we, we grow yacons, which is a South American root crop that we can grow in zone uh, five and four and five at the coldest. And we grow those. Uh, they're like, they, they look like a sweet potato when you dig them up, but they have an, a watery apple, watermelon, carrot taste. And we, I find it's the same thing that yacon syrup is made from. Uh, we, I find dehydrating them and making yacon chips are, are really good. Um, so we grow them. We got those from a garden center in Oregon in 2014. I've been saving the rhizomes, which is the only way you can propagate these plants. In South America, they can get about 15 to 30 pounds per plant. And after six months, they flower. Where we're at, we average about five to seven pounds a plant. And we maybe get five and four and a half to five and a half months of growth out of them. And they still do good. Um, 
So that that's always something that we enjoy growing. But the, the making better tomatoes, better green beans, the staples. Um, we had problems with cucumbers last year. Um, and I don't think it was more us. I think it was environment. I know a lot of people had problems with gardens last year because of the environment and, and issues. So uh, just making things that we normally grow, grow a lot better. Yeah, I, you know what? One of the things I cannot wait to grow every year is actually tomatoes. A lot, I, I've been going over hot peppers. I'm really getting to hot peppers. But when it comes to tomatoes, I'm like, I can't wait. I can't wait for that first tomato to come, you know? And But it's so funny because m- most of the time that first tomato that comes red has an uh, animal bit on oh. the other side. And you're like, oh, come on. I've right. been waiting this thing forever. <laughs> and, and, and just keep in mind the old uh, saying, I'd much rather plant my tomatoes the first time when – much rather plant my table to na- my tomatoes at the right time than the second time when my neighbor plants theirs the first. <laughs> now, what's what's the thing that if you grew something like uh, that you wanted to grow to have inside, like it? So, if I was to the garden, I can't wait to eat this inside. I'm not talking about a tomato, so you can't use tomato. <laughs> what what would the plant be? Like you want something from garden to table? Carrots. You have. Carrots and Brussels sprouts. If you've never ate only, if you've only ate store-bought carrots or Brussels sprouts, you do not know what you're missing. If you've never liked Brussels sprouts, grow Brussels sprouts in your home garden or get them at the farmer's market in the fall. It will change how you see Brussels sprouts. And the difference between a fresh carrot and the watery and the taste and the fragrance compared to a store-bought carrot is night and day. Now, since you're onto that subject, this is pretty cool. I love growing asparagus. I think it's amazing. But it, it learned, I learned a lot because you, you needed to get those sprouts start to form. Could you talk about a little bit about uh, the process of a asparagus plant and what to do when? Well, asparagus know- asparagus plants uh, can take healthily before you can really harvest the the spheres about four years. You can start it from seed, which is not the easiest. Uh, you can get one-year crowns or two-year crowns, and many people choose to do the two-year crowns. You plant it in the ground about six to eight inches, I think that's correct, um, below the so- surface, and they have it's like a spider web. You want to s- stretch out your roots. And then the third year, it's going to create some, and you don't want to touch it. You just want to let it go. And the fourth year, you will be able to harvest, I think, everything off of that plant that grows. And then once you harvest everything, you want to let it grow until it creates the big uh, bush on top of it to allow the energy to absorb back in the root system so it can produce again next year. Mm-hmm. Asparagus can last between 20 and 50 years. Yeah, um, It is an incredible plant. And if you just halfway care about it, it's going to do just fine. I, um, I love I love Brussels sprout. I mean, I mean uh, asparagus. Okay. You are so right. When you first have it out of the garden, they cut so nice and easy because it's so mm-hmm. fresh too. It's like you got to make sure you cut it all the way in the bottom. Right. You can't leave and it you don't have to snap it off like the store bought stuff. You can eat the whole thing. <laughs> it's so good. Mm-hmm. And Brussels sprouts the same thing. Brussels sprouts are amazing. Easy to grow. So easy. But you got to top them whenever you start seeing the sprout form in the joint. You got to top the top six inches to stop vertical growth and focus more on the sprout development. Definitely. I mean, that's that's two plants that if you've never grown it and kohlrabi too. Mm -hmm. Last year actually was the first year I I grew kohlrabi, and it was like, wow, what I've been missing this. I've been missing this. Did you grow the green or the or the burgundy? I grow both. Both. Okay. And what amazing! It was like, wow! Mm-hmm. I never expected to taste that good. If people if people don't know what we're talking about, search kohlrabi. It looks like an alien plant. Yeah, very alien. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna look in the chat and okay. see what kind of questions we have. Got to get the glasses. I'm getting too old. Uh-huh. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Uh, let's see, and I'll highlight it so you can answer it. How to kill grasshoppers, luber grasshoppers. I don't have an answer for that. 
Joe, do you have anything? I'm, I'm, I'm just, well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Is that Joe Lample, who is host of PBS Growing Green World, when we talked to him about, we, we got tied into him by accident and became friends. And he said, because oh, we said, we don't, after forming our friendship, we want to have a, a TV show. And he says, everybody wants to have a TV show. Get on radio. That's where it's at. And he said, the best answer you can possibly give on radio or TV is, I don't know. Don't give them any BS and make them <laughs> think that you know the answer when you don't just to try to satisfy th their satisfy their, their, their need for an answer. So I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I know Prey Mantis love grasshoppers. So I, I, that's the only answer I have to say that I don't call Prey out. Prey mantises are wicked insects. They'll kill birds too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else we have. Guys, anything above Uncle Al? I didn't see in the chat, so just make sure you write it again. And, and while you're doing that, I'll, uh, Holly and I started this YouTube channel as just a fun, fun hobby uh, with the video camera that she won and, and then doing that. And then it turned into YouTube videos and it turned into a radio show and it turned into a business. So now that hobby has become a business. And when your hobby becomes a business, it sometimes becomes overwhelming. So Holly grew up camping and I grew up on a farm in Southern Illinois and did hunting and camping and all that kind of thing. So we have now started it. We were refining our roots from young years ago when we were young. So we started a we started a camping podcast and a camping channel on YouTube because now that's our hobby to get away from the hobby that became a business. Uh, it's time by the tent on on the podcast, which we we interview uh, YouTubers who are in the gar in the camping world, and then time by the tent channel is the the YouTube uh, channel that we um, have for our our hobby and we document garden our camping tips and uh camping weekends that type of thing so that's something we do for fun that hopefully doesn't turn into a, a business like the gardening did <laughs> i think uh, that might be in your future more yeah. <laughs> don't, don't tell holly that because she said we're not doing we're not turning this into a business and i said okay you know, I like you know. Every time I think, every time we see Holly, I love the way you guys interact. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, why my wife and I, it's like the same thing. It just right. works out so well. And she's like that off camera and off the radio too. That that's who she is. So. <laughs> that's great. So Yossi, right here in the simple yes. kitchen. He's, he's from Israel. He's a container grow, grower. He doesn't have. He grows everything inside his house and shelves okay. and stuff. So his question: What do you think about integrated growing? in containers so container growing i guess container growing if done right you can grow basically 95 percent of anything that you were going to grow in the ground you can grow in containers um if you go to happy leaf led uh youtube channel that's the sponsor and that's why i'm talking about because they're american make grow lights they have series on growing almost virtually anything in containers and they interview and they talk to people who grow things in containers. Uh, if you have the right light conditions, the right um, humidity, the right light uh, duration, it can be a great thing. And you can do it either in a soil mix or a soilless mix. But with a soilless mix, you're gonna have to add nutrients, which are not necessarily all organic. But in a soil mix, you are gonna have to deal with insects because if you don't deal with insects and you bake your soil, you've killed the, the nutrients off, the good things off and so on, you gotta re, uh, vitalize it anyway. So absolutely. Uh, if you are unable to grow outside, containers can very much do the job. So Barb Brownlee says, great Brussels sprout tip. I'll be growing purple kohlrabi. Any tips? So any tips on gr growing kohlrabi? I think purple or burgundy or purple kohlrabi takes, what is it, 60 days to reach maturity. If you have never grown it before, you can get it from seed, uh, but what we found was buying it from the garden center in a six pack worked really, really well uh, instead of starting it from seed. Because sometimes um, if, you, if you're trying to grow something new, it's better to start with a start so you can get past the whole seed starting stage and focus on how the plant grows in your garden. How does it react to your, your, ecolog your ecosystem? So um, that would be my tip. They do want water. And 
you want to harvest them smaller than what you think they, they should be. Don't wait until they get baseball or softball size. Get them when they're small. Harvest them when they're small because they're tender and you can either pickle them or just chop them up and eat them in a salad or, or whatever. If you get them too big, they're going to be woody and you're not going to like what you get. So I don't know how to answer this one, but because uh, I didn't know there was a difference. I guess there is a little bit. How do you grow early peas as opposed to normal peas? To me, is a pea is a pretty much a pea. Right, but it would be the time in which you would harvest the pod. Right. Uh, also, it depends on if you're growing snow peas or snap right. peas or uh, shelling peas. Also, mm -hmm. that ver that type of category of pea would determine what you should what your intentions are and when you should grow them and you would just want to harvest them at a smaller pod state than what you normally would snap peas are amazing growing in the garden they are so super sweet it's I, unbelievable i think peas are one of the few vegetables that never make it inside <laughs> Un nice. unless you've got a 40 acre fillet of peas you're not making inside with too many of them Yeah, that's one thing because I use them as a snack at work. Mm. Thank God I don't smoke because I'm not constantly <laughs> drinking something or I eat carrots, but peas, it's like <laughs> uh -huh. it's what a what a big difference with peas. We do not do cover crop uh to increase uh to, to make soil healthier. What we do is in the fall, we capture all the leaves we can on our property and then pick them up on the street adjacent to the, the, the garden and across the street. And we will mound two to three foot of leaves in each raised bed and let that set there. And by the time we come back in the garden, which will be in about another two to three weeks, if everything works out well, uh, that will have suppressed to about 30% of the volume. And then we will just move them back, weed if necessary, and then plant our starts in there or um, if we're doing radishes or spinach or lettuce, we will just clear a spot out and then uh, broadcast the seeds and plant them that way. But there is ways like oats and you've got wheat that you can uh, do as a cover crop and then till under or flip under in order to feed the soil that way. Thank you, guys. We've got 93 people in the chat. You guys are awesome. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I appreciate it. Um, Nanny Kathleen says, what kind of containers do you use for tomatoes and lettuce on a porch? Five gallon bucket. Five gallon bucket is the best for a tomato and you want to have drainage. Now the key, many people think put drainage in the bottom of the plant or in the bottom of the container, which is fine. But if you take, let's say this is your five gallon container, that's a horrible, let's see. Uh, let's try it. If this is your five gallon container, you don't want to put holes in the bottom. You would want to put holes about one inch up around the base, about four drill, drill four half inch holes around. What that's going to do is it's going to allow some water to set in the base and then wick back up as the plant needs. It's not going to all rush out. So you have a little security there of moisture to, if you forget to water or you haven't got to watering yet, it can wick back up and your plant doesn't die. And you still have about an inch of moisture that can be utilized by that plant. With lettuce, you can do it with a three gallon grow bag, a five gallon grow bag without any problem. And you want to just broadcast it like you're like a carpet. You just want it to be as thick and as dense in that leaf lettuce as you possibly can. And then just cut it as you need it at about a third of the height. Because if you cut it all the way down, it's going to take too long to regenerate new top growth uh, before it gets too warm for you. So half to a third of the overall height, trim it down, and then it'll regenerate top growth much, much quicker for your next go around. So Yossi, going back to Yossi's yeah. question with the containers and intercropping your plants. Like I, we, we used to talk about containers. I love growing basil with tomatoes. Basil? And I like, and I like letting them go right. because then all those, the, the bees that come to your plant, for your tomato plant, is enormous. That's what I like basil for. And and companion planting is what he what, what's being asked. And there is two under, there's a misconception about compa companion planting. There is a certain mindset of, oh, if I plant X plant next to X plant, it will make this plant sweeter or make that plant sweeter. All companion planting is really doing is assisting one plant by another by deferring or absorbing insects or repelling them to keep both plants growing healthy, like the basil or uh, with the tomatoes or the peppermint with the zucchini. 
you're getting two plants, but one is assisting the other by keeping those insects out. So David Gray, she's what an awesome supporter for my channel. She's a, well, he, he's, he's, he's awesome. Mm -hmm. David, he gave us tons of seeds to give out. Great, just great gardener. Well, he has a tip. Any tips on starting elderberries from seed? I've never grown elderberries. I've heard they were a phenomenal plant, but we've just never uh, experimented in that realm of, of plants. Do you have anything on, on your end? I haven't I haven't done it okay. on my end either. But I heard the same same info that you have. Um, let me see what this says. You know, see, I grow parsley and lettuce together. I grow spring onions with micro dwarf tomatoes in pots. Idaho Garden Girl, I just didn't like mentioning people once in a while. It's in the chat. She has so many dwarf tomato plants. It's amazing. <laughs> Did you ever do the dwarf dwarf uh, project? Dwarf tomato we, project? We grew we grew and are growing tiny Tim tomatoes inside underneath Happy Leaf Grow Happy Leaf LED Grow Lights, and they are about 720 days old. There are three of them, and we started on March 9th. I think it was 2021, and they've been growing and producing. Uh, cherry-sized tomatoes ever since. About every 30 days, uh, by, they're in a one-gallon grow bag, and we feed them nutrients. They're in a potting soil mix, and they're about 720, 730 days old now. And we're going to see how long we can keep them going. Okay, I'm just looking anymore. So we're going to finish up in a little bit. Just seeing any more questions. Uh, do you have any chickens? We do not have chickens. Um, I, we don't have chickens due to the municipality that we live in. It's, it's not uh, welcomed. And it's, it would be something that we would have to maintain year round. And that's just not something that we want to commit to. I know that there are several people that frown upon people who don't have chickens or, or think chickens are the, are the greatest thing in which they are if you are able to have them and have the time in order to take care of them. And it's not just like a cat or dog. There's a lot of maintenance that goes on. And, and and I grew up on a farm in Southern Illinois. We had a lot of cattle and a lot of hogs. And and I, I'm just not ready to take care of more animals at this point. Um, did that for 20 some odd years and, and had, had my share of animal pageantry. What kind of tomatoes uh, varieties do you grow? Uh, Wisconsin 55, any brandy wine is the go-to for us. Black Crim is successful, whether it's a cold year, hot year, wet year, dry year. Um, Rome, uh, Rome, uh, Romans, uh, uh, striped, uh, striped zebra, red zebra, green zebra striped, uh, uh, any type of Amish paste is another one. We uh, Big white, giant white is a nice... Sweet tomato, I think. Now, did um, it take you for a while to have the white tomato? Like to it, say, okay, I'm really going to try that, or did you just say, I'm going to, I'm going to have it right away? We we had it right away, and I think it's much sweeter than than red tomatoes. Uh, if you want a less acidic tomato, if acidity is not your friend, you want to grow something that's not red. There's plenty of yellows, oranges, whites, uh, purples, but the red ones are the most acidic tomatoes that, that you can obtain in your garden. Now, did you guys ever get into hot peppers or are they just too hot for you? I think a bell pepper's hot. So um, I, <laughs> <clears throat> we grow jalapenos for my brother-in-law. He is from Colombia, South America, and he just thinks it is the greatest thing that, you know, there is. And we also grow yacons because where he's from in South America, that is a, a staple down there. And it reminds him of his home country. So we, we like doing that each year, uh, yacons and, and hot peppers for him. But the hot peppers, not I got to. Uh, we got sensitive tongues, and I know there's people that love hot peppers, and the hotter the better. But my my thought is, if the person preparing the peppers at the restaurant has to use mask and gloves, you probably probably shouldn't be eating that. <laughs> It'll take the paint off your car. So I don't know if that's really consumable. But I understand people think it's it's great, and they try to breed them, and, and it's a it's a whole thing on YouTube. Uh, Pepperheads, I think, is what is it's called. Um, and more power to you. Peppers. I, yeah. you know what I got into, I was, I was never a hot pepper guy. Right. And then I had a couple of peppers and I'm like, Oh, this is not bad. You know, but it was a little too hot still. I couldn't, I, if I had a spicy, uh, 
hot pepper sandwich at McDonald's or something like that. And it was too hot for me. I mm. never enjoyed it. But what I got into is hot pepper powders. Okay. And uh, Jimmy Pickles at jppepperseeds.com. <laughs> Every time I say that name, they got it just rolls off my mouth. Um, he gave me a whole bunch of pepper powders taste. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. This is not good. This is not good at all. And what I noticed is after you dehydrate these peppers, the taste is absolutely amazing. And you just still use a little dab. Because okay. I had hot pepper, like the hot pepper flakes on pizza. Mm -hmm. and I thought that was good. Then I was like, wow, you use these powders, the hot, some of the hot ones. It's really gives an amazing taste. And a culinary world, they don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. They really don't. They really don't. Um, so I'm, I'm starting to really, really, I've been, for the last year and a half, I've been really getting to hot peppers. So do you dehydrate your own or you're just yeah. learning about that now and you're going to use utilize that this year? I dehydrate my my, uh, my own, but I'm also really, I'm growing 600, 650 varieties of hot peppers. Okay. So, so I'm, gonna... I'm going nuts. Yeah. <laughs> There's worse things that you could be doing. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, I planned to grow 300 varieties of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And then I tore my Achilles tendon. Mm -hmm. So last last couple of years has been an absolute disaster for me. It's my son's health and my Achilles. When you talk about dehydrating, people who don't like eating okra because it's slimy, dehydrate it and then hydrate it or use it into a stir fry or something, and the slime dissipates immensely. Well, that's great. And you know, I never thought about that. And there's 135 different varieties of okra in, in the world, and we are just very used to two or three in the United States. Okay. All right. So, Joey, thank you so much for coming on and spending this time. We had about 97 people on the chat was our record. And uh, I know there's going to be a lot of people watching this after. And I think everybody here learned a lot. And I appreciate you coming on. I've been following you forever. To me, you're like, you're, you're a YouTube celebrity to me. You're a celebrity. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We, we don't look at that. We just look at we're here to help people so they don't make the mistakes because we've made them for you. <laughs> And tell Holly I said hello and hi and hope hope we could do something like this again. Absolutely. And yes. I appreciate everything you do for the whole entire community because we're all learning. But to me, we're all learning from each other. But certain right. people we tend to go to more because we trust them. And thank I trust you. everything you say. So right. I appreciate thank you. that. Well, thank so, you for having me on. All right. Thank you, Joey. Thank Take you. care. Have a, have a good right. day. You too. So, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I really did. Um, he's a, such a great guy and, uh, yeah, he's been on YouTube for since 2011. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and back in the day when I seen a gardening channel on, I used to email or used to, you know, find out information, figure out a way to contact that person. And so that's how I create a lot of my contacts in the past was just by emailing them. Yes, you'll learn. And that's the best way to learn because you're never too old to learn. Okay, so we're going to get to Sunday Fun Day uh, prizes. we got 90 people in the chat. Um, our record's 127, just to let you know. Um, most of my hot peppers in the back. So far, I'm on tray 20. I'll finish tray 20 tonight. So tray 20 times 72, that's just hot peppers. I'll finish up. I don't think I have pretty much left is... Uh, jppepperseeds.com <laughs> and then I'll start my tomatoes after that this week and move on from everything else which I got to put stuff in a greenhouse and hopefully it stays warm um we got some great prizes today um look at this this is pretty cool thinking a little bit I used to right you got these are carrots and a little bin so we're gonna give that away let me uh add a banner I appreciate uh belt loop thank you for becoming a member I appreciate that thank you for to belt loop um, I, all memberships really, really helps becoming a member. It really does. Um, I, I said it before and I don't want to keep on saying it, but YouTube has created, we only get like 15, $20 a month. So I'm not even talking about my show. It's talking about all the others. Uh, we really don't get paid from YouTube. It's up to you guys, the supporters to actually support us. So, and just to let you know, we all appreciate it. And thank you, Beltloop, for becoming a member. Uh, there's other ways to support my channel, as you, uh, Venmo and PayPal, and uh, becoming a member. So I appreciate that. 
Oh, thank you, ladies. Thank you, Jesse and Lisa. I appreciate that. Um, so let me get back to that. So besides the C categories, um, let me post that. So make it easy today. We have five. Now, Kitty W is a grab bag of everything. And my gardener seeds, hot, hot pepper seeds, dwarf tomatoes, and Baker's Creek. Some of the stuff is peppers. I mean, uh, corn basket. I mean, not corn. See, I'm all over the place. Uh, carrot basket. Um, we got two things of hot sauce. Oh, Nana Kathleen, thank you so much. And thank you guys for all the uh, members. Oh, what's this one? So Annabelle bought a, wow, a mem new membership. Thank you, Annabelle, for doing that. That is awesome. If you guys want to become uh, allow gifts, click on that. That's how you become a member. There's Stock Explorer. There's Great Man Prepping, Canadian Proud Get Outdoors. Thank you guys for all the support. It really helps. It really does. Um, I'll let you guys know that I haven't been in the chat. I'm getting... Uh, renewing our vows, so we're having another wedding on 888 to my wife Julie, and here's Jane Doe. And 811, we're having a party in our backyard. And anybody here wants to come, let me know. <laughs> anyway, the hot sauces, pineapple ginger hot sauce, pucker butt. So these bottles are not anything you could buy at your ShopRite, Walmart, whatever. Uh, these are really good pepper companies. Some of these are $15, $12. Let me see what this one is. Cranberry and ghost pepper. Ghost pepper is going to be a little hot. <laughs> so that's two things of hot sauce. We have four things of this impeccable yarn. So we got four of those. We got four of these gray ones. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I bought that today. We have two things. This goes to one winner. Uh, one pound. It's a pounder. It's two pounders. So that's purple. I guess every time I think of purple, I think of Cindy. We've got a whole catalog. Still in the back from Baker's Creek Seeds. Got to love Baker's Creek. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got another two from uh, let's see. Jumbo, Jumbo, from Karen. Uh, there you go. It's like uh, ice cream yarn. So you went two of those. And if we need other stuff, I got some stuff somewhere as I'll get. So next, oh, thank you, Gray Man Prep, and thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, so next week we're gonna. I have three channels. So you know how we go over four channels and we do, I'll show you the channel. Next week, we're going to go live. We're going live. So I'm going to ask three channels to come on, probably around 8.15, 8.30, 8.45. We'll a burp. And so uh, we'll go over, we'll talk a little bit. And I want you to talk about your channel. So it could be any channel. that you know, I, ain't, I don't want to put somebody up that hasn't really been here before. So if you have a history with me, you want your chat show, and you got something really good going on, I want to promote you because I'm all about promoting your channel. So that's the reason why I'll do those jib jabs and everything is promoting you so they can see your face to a channel. Now we can see you live. So if you want something like that, email me over time. I know Yoshi's been wanting to come on, so Yoshi's going to ask him first. And there's a couple other people I have in mind for the first people. But it would be 8.15, 8.30, 8.45. And talk about your channel. And if you have something good going on, uh, I, I want to show it. You know, we're we're family here. So, okay. So the first thing we're going to give away, let's give this away because it's right here and right in front of me. Then we'll give four things of seeds. Then we'll move on to the next. Oh, no. Let's go hot sauce. So this is first. This is second. And then we'll do some seeds. Uh, let me see my comments. So thank you guys coming on. As you guys know, I want to say hi to everybody, but this will be a four-hour show if it did. Um, I just named some people off the in the beginning. Let me at the end. I mean, Mike's Jay at a gardening. Got Lady Loves. Late, uh, Lisa has doesn't really come on because she's already sleeping in the UK. So I'm happy she's here today. There's Renee's Garden. I love to crochet. Uncle Al. 
Annabelle, Canadian Proud Get Outdoors. There's Yossi, RG, Arizona Homestead, Canadian Proud Get Outdoors, Indiana Backyard Gardener. That was a great laugh today by Gail Southern Living. Uh, she had Indiana Backyard Gardener. Go check that out. That was good. I was listening to that when I was setting up the live. Kelly Minier. Uh, there's Cam Patton Family Compound, which is Gil. He sent a lot of got a lot of people to my channel today. I appreciate that, Gil. There's Bailey, <laughs> Bailey Nuckter, <laughs> Cat on the Prowl, Prowl, Prowl Creations. Uh, let me see, Little Lone Prepper, John Prinkworth. Welcome in, welcome in, Lisa Allison, Barb's Country Home, Lisa and Jesse from Lazy Days Ahead. Hope you guys like them singing. I thought that was pretty creative. Actually, I had a picture of uh, <laughs> Jesse and his little figurine. Look exactly like him, but I just couldn't get the figurine to talk. And when I had him talk, it didn't look right with it was too close to Jesse. It just didn't work out well. There's Lisa Grammy uh, scattered, Nana Kathleen Butler family farm, and on and on and on. So thank you guys for everybody coming in. I'm sorry I can't mention you, uh, but I'll try to mention people in the chat like Helen Ford and Scratch and Pete's here. Love Scratch and Pete. Watch those scratch offs. Actually, it gets fascinating after a while because she really wants somebody to win. So let's get there's let's get back to uh, the wheel. It's already 8:15. So next week, different format. And this is gonna be probably your last video. If you guys want to get in secret, Santa 23. Go to the video, leave a comment, and all thing you have to do is say gardening, crafts, or crochet. Say uh, where you're from so I can match you up, UK or international, or I do whatever. I'll ship anywhere so I can match you up like that, and uh, it's over 20. So if you think you can make something and it's over 20, that's great, uh, but it has to be over $20 value, not including shipping. So shipping give really add up things. There's Doris Artman, Margie's Crafty Corner, Stephen Sheets. Welcome in, welcome in. Okay, so let's get to the wheel. There's first. This is really cool. And you got some cranberry ghost. No, no, one second. Is that yeah? Cranberry and ghost. And we'll give away some seeds. And let me get my book ready because I'm not prepared. Hope you guys really liked that interview. And if you have a chance, if you came in late, go back and watch that. Like it. Watch watch the commercials. Gotta like those commercials. You never know. You might get a discount somewhere. Okay. Setting up here. I have stuff over the place. I can't wait to see what this place is going to be look like next week. It's going to be nuts. Okay. Okay, so here is the wheel. And good luck, everyone. This is the first brass. This is really cool. And it's poker time. It's poker time. It's poker time. It's poker time. That is three people in a pet. Check out the Michael today, if anybody wants to know. Who's going to be the winner? Winner, Lathalia's little hook. That is Melanie. So, congrats, congratulations to Lathalia, which is Melanie, and congratulations. Now, the only way you claim your prize, you got to be in the chat to win. There she is. And yes, please. So, congratulations. Again, you guys, you got to be in the chat to win. And uh, you only have five minutes to claim your prize because once I show, once I go over five prizes, I go right to the video, short video uh, saying check out this channel. And then if you're not in the chat, you can't win. You can't go back and say, oh, I was in the chat. Well, I know we all have problems and, uh, you know, with internet connections, but that's the way I have to work things. So it gives you a couple of minutes, even if you have to go by your phone or whatever. You say, I'm here, I'm here. Just put it in all caps. Winners, when you win, make sure it's in all caps so the mods and everybody else could 
help you out. And thank you guys for all the mods here to help make this program successful. Hot sauce. Cranberry. Ghost dog. Bye. Angry goat pepper cookie. Angry goat pepper cookie. This mask. I should have this for myself. It work. Congratulations to Sifting Some Soil 55. Sifting Some Soil and More. So congratulations, congratulations Sifting Some Soil and More. So congratulations, Sift Some Soil. You won to yourself some hot sauce. There's MB Heritage Farms. Welcome in. No yarn again. There's Candy Dudette. Lori Wallace, welcome in. So looking for Sifting Some Soil 55 or Sifting Some Soil and more. I, she's a member, so that's the reason why her name is like that. And if you remember from the start, your name's probably going to be with your original name. So congratulations. There she is. Pass it on to I Love to Crochet. So I Love to Crochet. Congratulations. You ready to get hot? So I love to crochet. Let us know. Do you want this hot sauce? If you do not want this hot sauce and want to give it to someone else, let me know. So, yeah, thank you. So congratulations to – this is going to be very interesting sauce to have because there's going to be so much sweetness, and I don't think the ghost pepper is going to be that hot. Because it's going to be so sweet. So congratulations. Hey, there's Urban Garden, Garden Chronicles. Uh, Saturday, guys, at 2 o'clock. It, it's going to get better. His show is going to get, Enoch's channel is going to get better and better and better. Uh, 2 o'clock on Saturdays. So check out Urban, Urban Garden. And that's awesome. Let's see. Uh, Oh, seeds, seeds, seeds. So congratulations. I love it. It's the vineyard checks. Who's doing seeds? Please let me know in the chat. The Garden Homestead. So the Garden Homestead, let us know what kind of seeds you want. It's listed down below. That's your choices. And then I just pick out of a box, and that's what you get. That's how we get to do things. There is AJ Screen Topics. Love AJ Screen Topics and Warm Farming. So congratulations to the Garden Homestead. Okay, let's go on to the next winner. Ready? Canadian Pride, get outdoors. So let us know what kind of seeds you want. Canadian Pride, get outdoors. So the Garden Homestead, you won yourself um, some Hartman's Gooseberry. Hartman's Gooseberry. I got a shuffle. Please just tell me to shuffle. So the Hartman's, uh, the Garden Homestead is Hartman's Gooseberry. We are looking for. Or Canadian Proud Get Outdoors. I got to shuffle, guys. Because this is still like when I entered the names, I never shuffled. So, um, oh, I think I messed up the Urban Garden Chronicles. Oh, that was the Urban Gardener. Urban Garden Chronicles. Somebody's totally different. <laughs> Whoops. I messed that up. Sorry. Urban Garden Chronicle is also an amazing, amazing channel. I apologize. I tell you what, when you get stuff put on live, it's like, whoa, your mind flows. Anyway, if I try to follow her all the time. I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling. Every day I'm shuffling. Every day I'm shuffling. And I love the vineyard checks. 
Let's go. Anything works. So let's go with this. Whoops, whoops, whoops. What is this? I have no idea what this is. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, that's going to be used for heat. I can't use that one. It was a passion flower. Let me go to this box. Oh, this is good. You got uh, Canadian Proud Get Outdoors. You got some cow flower. This is from Back to the Roots. This is Kitty W Seeds. So congratulations, Canadian Proud Get Outdoors. And the reason why I showed this for some reason and picked it out after a bit, because, well, my friend Lisa's here. That's Lady Bird Loves, and she loves cauliflower. <laughs> So I got you cauliflower. So congratulations. Okay, one last roll before the whole channel. I just put everything out there like it is, guys. 95 people in the chat. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the nation. Remember that. Everything. Everything we do to support. Little things to do. Did she email me? 2%. Congratulations to 2%. Yeah, look at that. Cowflower with a smiley face. Congratulations to 2%. That's awesome. So looking for 2% in the chat. Cowflower, yuck. <laughs> I think I might be something with 2% in my choose. So the other thing I know is if I see 2%, don't, don't choose cowflower. <laughs> you grow it in cool, cooler areas. It's so much better in hot areas, that's for sure. So what did I win? What did I win? 2% and you won seeds. So let me know what kind of seeds you want. Choices are down below. You got the Kitty W grab bag and my gardener. Haha, <laughs> peppers, dwarf tomatoes, or Baker's Creek. So let us know 2%. That is awesome. 2 percent has been here since the very beginning. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so looking for 2%. When she's going to say it in the chat, I'm going to get ready to do her first. Give, oh, disabled and prepping. So congratulations, disabled and prepping. So when I see disabled and prepping, just say uh, what you like in the chat. When you do that, let me see. I'm trying to follow. I'm trying to follow. I'm trying to follow. So looking for disabled and prepping. So let's do our channel review. This time's going to be a little limited. Thank you so much. Microdorf. Now, I don't know if I could choose a Microdorf. Well, yeah, this is good. Let me see. I don't know if Microdorf, I don't think it fits, but I do have a mini bell, which could be a micro doll. So if you can see that, the mini bell tomato. So mini bell tomato for disabled and prepper. Now, since we're talking about uh, disabled and prepping, let's go to disabled and prepping's channel. I see Brussels sprouts. So let me expand this. Let's see what she has to say. I'm not going to show the whole video, but look at those little Brussels sprouts. But a lot of seeds she gets, she does. Oh, well, thank you so much, Lori. A lot of the stuff she gets from everybody here or she wins here goes right to her community garden, her Thrive Garden. So let's see what she has to say. This is, comes from her. And I went to the community garden today. Please excuse this bowl. Uh, it's stained. It, I've washed it from two bazillion times. It's the one I make tea in, but I won't be able to anymore because I cracked the bottom of it just slightly. Um, but this is not what this video is about. I went and picked some uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh, they were pretty much picked over. Um, so I picked off some of them that I could um, with my gardening tool, which is awesome, by the way. Um, I had a few green beans while I was out there that were still um, not dried out <laughs> and a couple of tomatoes. And I put a couple of tomatoes in the bag um, that I brought it home in. But um, thankfully, 
for that garden tool, I was able to help a gentleman out. Um, I know that he's um, kind of broke. <laughs> and so he, he uses the garden to help feed him every day. Um, and so um, so he wanted some Brussels sprouts, but he he's like, I don't know how to get them off of there. To learn how to so I told him how I do it with easy. the um, tool, but I said before that, I got him at the farmer's market one year, um, and I just took a paring knife and I cut him off. So um, he's like, that would be so cool Thank to you. have some tonight. Like so what I did is I took my gardening tool and chopped so um, one of the stalks down oh, cool, cool. for him so he could have some tonight and he's going to go home and um, take them off the stock and get them prepared. So this is what I got. Um, I just got enough for one meal. It took quite a while to um, pick some off and then I chopped some from him and I uh, chopped the stock down for him and now I'm too tired to do any more. So um, I might say what the crap I want to watch this video. I appreciate it. You know, it's all about supporting each other. And uh, we definitely do it here. So that's uh, pretty awesome. So I seen Tuber chatting before. So thank you, Tuber Chat, for coming on in. There's Recyclable Homestead, Chris Shirley, Babies. There's Outventures with Outdoor Eagle. Mountain Grandma just came in. Um, Temple and Acres. Awesome. And thank you again. Thank you for all the mods for making this happen. Hey, we got 98 people in the chat. Two more for 100. <laughs> 127 is the record. Okay, so we're going to give this yarn away first. Jumbo yarn. Then we're going to give this pineapple ginger. Pineapple ginger hot sauce from Pucker Butt. So this is really hot, guys. Heat index, five. Five out of five peppers. And I think I've seen arsenic element here in chat before, too. I miss you, buddy. I uh, I used to follow arsenic element. He pop, He was always every single day, but he's been a busy guy. He's been hunting right now, too. He's been hunting a lot. So we got the uh, ice cream yarn, and we got some pineapple ginger, ginger hot sauce, which is really hot. And then we got some seeds. So, hey, guys, doing a polka really works. I, guys, I love your suggestions. Five out of five winners. That never happens. Okay. Let's see if we could do another five for five. Okay. I can't see really anything in the chat besides my phone right now, and I'm blind. Let me shuffle, 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 and shuffle, 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 shuffle. Dark Lord Minute. Welcome in. Welcome in. There's Cindy Brown, Kelly Minier, Jane Doe. Love that Uncle Uncle Al watches every single video I make and leaves a comment. I just want to say, th Uncle Al, thank you so much for everything you do for helping my channel. There's a Secret Ch Santa link. So, again, it ends ne by next Sunday, Secret Santa is over. And we had such a great success in the, in the first one. Um, I think people were extremely happy. You're not, not going to make everybody happy, but I think more of everybody talked to me, everybody I talked to. I said they loved it. There's Jan uh, Janice Erfer. Man, I'm really blind. I got to type. There's Andale. There we go. Okay, here we go. Ice cream yarn. <laughs> Email me. Red Road Homestead. Congratulations to Red Road Homestead. I don't think they are in the chat. So, but maybe I could be wrong. Congratulations to Red Road Homestead. If you are a member, you are automatically put on a wheel. So if you are a, uh, a zucchini member, you just get seeds twice a month. You don't get put on a wheel. But if you are anything higher than that, a Joseph's Jelly Bean Club, you get to put on one time. Plus, if you are 
if you leave a comment in a registration video, you're put on twice. Then uh, you go up higher at other levels. So superhero, you get put on twice. You leave a comment, you get put on three times. And uh, Joseph's Journey, you get put on three times. You leave a comment four times. So it really helps out your uh, trying to win. So looking for a Red Road Homestead. I don't see Red Road Homestead. Okay, Ginger Hot Sauce. Ginger Hot Sauce. If you are a member and cannot make the log, email me. I can pick you up for that. There's Tina. Welcome in, Tina. And I really wish we could have scanned us out. SoundQuest 1976, Rob. SoundQuest 1976. Rob's been with this channel forever and ever. So thank you for all, all the support you, gave, you give us this channel, SoundQuest 1976. Rob. Okay, seeds, seeds, seeds. I think I might as well, I should need to hit some wood because I want I don't want people to win here. I don't want people not to be here. Okay, seeds. <laughs> This will be my manager, Mark Brownlee. The Indiana Backyard Gardener is now a zucchini member. Whoop, whoop. Thank you so much. Indiana Backyard, Indiana Backyard Gardener, you want yourself some seeds. Just like you don't need, you don't have enough of them right now. There's Al Shafe, my step back. He just had a 24-hour giveaway. That was pretty amazing. So, Indiana Backyard Gardener, you want yourself seeds. What kind of seeds do you want? I tell you what, the amount of seeds that uh, Adrian gets at Indiana Backyard Gardener doing that seed swap uh, was a, a, <laughs> it was crazy. Let us know what kind of seeds do you want, or do you want to give this away? Uh, Kelly, I did not get your super chat, or if I did mention it. Um but, Kelly, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I don't know how I missed it. Um, welcome in, Bolt, uh, Bolt on a Rock Homestead. Our treasured home is here, Ted Pottle. So, Indiana Backyard Garner, do you want seeds? I missed it. Dwarf tomatoes. Okay, what do we got? Indiana Backyard Gardener. Let me show this. I'm going to minimize it here. This is what you want. Because of this little cool tomato. Oh, so there's the micro dwarf. So this is called the ink spot. It's a micro dwarf tomato. I don't separate these. And I really didn't think I knew I had any more micro dwarf. Anyway, this is pretty cool. Ink spot. When I get more money, I'll order some more from uh, Bunny Hop Seeds. That's where I get all my dwarf seeds. There's Cindy at Life and Yarn Tangled. Okay, so seeds, seeds, seeds. Let me get back here. We're looking for Red Road Homestead and Southwest. Red Road Homestead and Southwest. I'm looking for you guys. Who's going to be one of the seeds? Seeds, seeds, seeds. That's right, Chris. Disabled and prepping. Big winner today. Big winner. So let us know. Disabled and prepping. Congratulations. You want yourself some seeds. I'm going to go right to the next winner so I can... Go uh, a bigger picture, show you guys what you want. Welcome in, deep purchasing, electric for share. <laughs> That's so true. So true. Let alone prepper. Congratulations, little lone prepper. So we are looking for little lone prepper. 
They'll say about them prepping I still need because I don't have it. And I probably just missed uh I missed it. Um we got Indian in the backyard. Okay, so the people we need right now before when I come back is Red Road Homestead, SoundQuest Rob, Disabled and Prepping, which I know Disabled and Prepping is here and I just missed it, and Little Lone Prepper, which is there's Little Lone Prepper. She wants crab bag. Okay. So Little Lone Prepper, you won watermelon beefsteak. So congratulations, little lone pepper. And let's see, we get disabled and prepping. What is this? Hmm. Uh, disabled and prepping. You got some from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Listen, listen, uh, listen, not okay. So, yeah. So we got Little Lone Prepper disabled and prepping in Indiana Backyard Gardener. So the two other channels that I don't, they're not here, is SoundQuest Rob 1976, you want hot sauce, and Red Road, Home, Red Road Homestead is ice cream yarn. But if they're not here in the chat by the time I get back, those, those go back. Those go back. So let's do a channel review. Again, next week, these will be live. There will be three channels going live. Um, I know, know I'm, I know I'm going to ask Yossi because Yossi's been asking to go live, so we're going to put Yossi on a live. And we could talk about his channel for five minutes, only five minutes, guys. And there'll be two other channels uh, that I'm not sure of right now. So and I got to see if Yossi wants to do it, too. Okay. So this is Bob at 942. He's in Wide Family Farm. He's always on the lives at Wide Family Farm, which is 11 o'clock tonight. What does Bob have to say? He's getting more in gardening this year. So let's see what Bob has to say. I went out on our lunch date on Sunday and picked up this beautiful hyacinth. That's going to go in the ground. But today we got rhubarb going in the ground. Hi, Camper 14. It just started raining, which is just perfect. Here we go. There's one of them right there. There's Valerie. If you remember right, um, I put a whole bunch of that paper, like what you see on top of the ground underneath there, paper, leaves, coffee grounds. By God, it worked. When I when I dug the, the sod parts back off here, it was just full of earthworms. They're eating that stuff like crazy. Here's work in progress. Hi, Sally and Michelle. These are some of the cherry trees uh, tops that I took out. I got to wait till my yard waste bin is emptied before I can cut these up and drop them in there. There's another rhubarb. The frogs tend to hang out around this, this stump. There's passageways underneath it, and that's where one of the places that they live. And right over hey, here Valerie. is... These are being planted for shade and cover and concealment for the Pacific Northwest green tree frogs. And you can see the location is right next to one of my neighbor's bushes. So let's go behind me here. But uh, back to this cherry tree stuff, man, don't be lazy and let this stuff grow up. And because that, that these know. things weigh a couple hundred pounds, man, this is cherry. This would go, this would be a missile going right through my house. If I waited on this stuff. Hi, Jen and Steve. Yeah, here's that cherry tree. Beautiful tree, really. Got more to cut out. See how they're leaning over? Like that one's the next one. Got to trim those trees. Here's another rhubarb. I might have mentioned that it's starting to rain right now. That's perfect timing because we'll get this some water on these new plants. And over Bob here was three of the rhubarb starts that didn't didn't sprout, so I just threw them in this other hole right here. We'll see what happens. If they come up, well, that's good. If not, I'll just go down to the local nursery. So we'll check out Bob up another one. Nine forty two. So check out that channel. 
Bob942, that's the channel name. So before I expand it and make it a little bigger, it'll be a little lower. So you kind of get it right off the bat. The two other channels, I also put a community post who's on my live. So if you guys want to check the, that out, just hit the name and it goes right to the link, uh, right to their channel. There's Crystal's Pets and Plants. Um, it's just another channel. It's been every single video I make. They always leave a comment. And Crystal, I really appreciate that. I really do. Uh, thank you so much. And that's a channel I get down right to. I got to follow more, you know, because the people that support me, I want to make sure I support them a lot more than they support me. It's <laughs> just the way I like to do things. So uh, I got a lot of makeup to do. 98 people in the chat, two away from 100 again. Make sure you guys, oh, 99 in the chat, uh, one away from 100. Make sure you guys hit that like button, share it out. It's some awesome stuff. So I did not see um red road homestead and i did not see sound quest so like those two prices are going back so if they are in a chat you have right now to claim it because otherwise um there are 102 thumbs so we're over 100 thumbs so appreciate that guys and i hope you guys really like the guests we had on today uh i really try to do things outside the box and uh some inside the box but do things that nobody else does and uh, I hope you guys, you know, appreciate that. And if you are growing your own channel, uh, 100 people in the chat, thank you, guys. That's what I always try to get, 100 people in the chat. That's about my goal all the time. If you guys are starting your channel off, do something different. Everybody's doing the same exact thing, uh, you know, trying to grow channels. And certain ones, you know, they get hit off other ones. It What happens is your channel never continues to grow. Um, because there's so many of them out there. So if you are doing it, just make sure you continue adding stuff to it. That's my suggestion. So don't just support channels. That's it. Make sure you have other things to go to. Um, it, it, it should be sharing channels out should be only 25%. If anything, uh, thank you so much, Nancy McDonald. I appreciate that, Nancy. Um, maybe 25% of your channel, if you want to do it that way. You know, just want to keep on growing. Don't do the same exact thing everybody else does. Okay, that's just what I think. Um, so ice cream yarn and hot sauce are back. And uh, we'll do seeds again. So there we go. So, oh, uh, channel review. I forgot the channel review. So uh, let me see. So we disabled and prepping. We did Bob. Oh, we did Bob. We just did Bob. Okay, I'm over the place. This is where I need Lisa behind me and go, Joe, what are you thinking about? I need Lisa yelling at me. But, well, she can't be behind my head right now. <laughs> She's in the UK. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get to the wheel. Okay, I know I'm not making any sense, guys. During the weekends, I only live on six hours sleep. <laughs> Total. So. Okay. Seeds, seeds, seeds. Well, thank you so much, Barb. I like to be yelling at <laughs> Adventures Mama. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tina. Oh, when I say Tina, adventure with Mama, Mama, Mama. Adventure with Mama. <laughs> Can't say it right. This is what you want. Let me know if you want this. Adventures with Mama. I just can't say it right, guys. I'm so sorry. There's Angela, which is me, Moss, Crochet, and other arts. Oh, my God. Uh, Catherine, so thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I just got on my notice. Thank you. That's That extremely helps me out right now. There is uh, Ben Genetics is here. Welcome in. Purple Tea Bear. So looking ventures with Mau Mau. I guess nobody wants the ice cream on. Okay, hot sauce, hot sauce. <laughs> This is the pineapple ginger hot sauce. 
Carolina first. Thank you. There she is. Oh, yes, I want it. Thank you. I'm driving, too. There we go. So congratulations. The Garden Homestead. She got some repeat winners today. So to Garden Homestead, you wanted yourself some hot sauce, the pineapple ginger. So we're looking for the Garden Homestead. It's awesome when you win two times. It's something you really don't expect. I wonder if Simply Jane is around. because I never forget when she came on and she didn't win like six times. And then all of a sudden she won like five times in one thing. That was pretty funny. It didn't go through YouTube. Oh, Kitty, that's even better. Anytime you do PayPal or Venmo, it really it's it helps. It's easier. It's more money for me. Uh, so thank you. So we are looking for the Garden Homestead. Okay, seeds, 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 seeds. For Sarah's little corner of crochet world, welcome in. I love our treasure home. It's Tina. So let me know if you guys see the Garden Homestead because I'm not going to be able to see it. Just make sure it's all. If you guys win, put it in caps. If you guys win, put it in caps. Yossi, you want to do the five minute channel review next week? Let me know. So we are. Uh, one second. Did I just see it? Tina, Tina, where are you, Tina? Yes, yes, I want. Okay. So, Tina, you want yourself some seeds. What kind of seeds do you want, Tina? And we're looking for the Garden Homestead. The Garden Homestead, if you're still in the chat, you were in the chat before. But, Tina, let me know what kind of – there's five choices on a live right there. Just choose one of those choices, Tina. So congratulations to Tina. So I'm waiting for Tina's response until I go on. It's good to see Camper 14 here today. So looking for Tina Reimer. Let me know what type of seeds do you want. Peppers. Okay, I guess that means hot, hot peppers. Okay. So, well, do you want sweet or hot, hot, Tina? Sweet or hot, hot? If you want hot, hot, I have it right here. If it's sweet, it's hard to go through variations of pepper. All my stuff's in. Let me see. Okay, so Yoshi's good for five minutes next week. Hot, hot. Ooh, Tina, cheers. Hot, hot. Oh, you're awesome. So, Tina, here, let me show you. I'm going to take this off. So, this is what you want, Tina. Ahi Hibanero. It's from jppepperseeds.com. So, congratulations to Tina. Okay, so I did not see the Garden Homestead come on back yet. So that might go back. Two more winners of seeds. Seed, seed, seed. Make sure you guys email me. Appreciate that. If you haven't seen today's live, go back and watch it. Watch it for sure. Jesse's best tomato plants.
Hope you guys, the uh, jelly bean members, like their Ukrainian seeds. Oh, uh, 2900. Cindy, 2900. Okay, 2900 for Cindy. Seeds, seeds, seeds. That's what it was. Jesse's Thank you so much, Cindy. Helen Ford. And I tell you what, Helen Ford saves me so much time. She made she got all these envelopes with name on top. It made me it made life so much easier. Gave me stamps. Uh, she did it twice for me in the last year. Oh my God, what a time saver, money saver, and everything. Tons of seeds Helen sent over. Huge, huge help. So appreciate uh, I appreciate you, Helen Ford. Thank you so much. So last winner is Helen Ford. And so we have Jesse's best tomato plants. So okay. So we're gonna do a next channel review. So if you guys see Helen Ford, Jesse's best tomato plants or Garden Homestead. That's the three winners. They have all the way to the end of the video. So to start all live, if they come back, they're good. But if I start the next wheel, I cannot give them their prize. Okay. Channel review. So we did Bob 942. We did Disabled and Prepping. Let me see. So this is the Stock Explorer. This is Nora. And she does support channels. Um, she's also does stuff with the stock market, the stock explorer, the stock market. It's one of the kindest people says she pass on uh, disabled and prepping. You won again. So Helen Ford has given it to disabled and prepping. So disabled and prepping, just when I come on back after this video, I'll be looking for your name. So don't let me, we'll try to get you. Okay. So uh, that, that, that takes care of that. And so we're just looking for Jesse's best tomato plants and a garden homestead. Okay, so the stock explorer, which is Nora, I, she's been, I've been friends with her for a long time on, on YouTube, and amazing person, amazing supporter, so 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 kind. Uh, she's a moderator in Tuber Chat, which I see, so I see her there. I see her live first thing in the morning, and you know she's there for you, and I appreciate everything little thing she does. Just to try to support me any way she can. So she drove Uber for a while. So that was pretty interesting. Um, but I love hearing her stories and what she does during a day. And I it's, There's so much to the person that I really appreciate, more than just the channel. So I'm just going to show her what she does on her live. Um, and she also has the, her gardening channel called The Tropical Buzz. And she got in the Peter Pepper contest last year, and I thought that was outstanding. Um, so thank you for doing that, uh, Noor. But you know what? This also shout out to Hooga Homestead. So she's talking about Hooga's Homestead here. So we're going to show a little bit of the chat here and see what she has to say so you guys can follow. Oh, Garden Homestead says Seeds. Okay, so we're going to get seeds for Garden Homestead. So that definitely goes back. So to Garden Homestead, I'll get seeds for you when I come back. And disabled and prep, and I'll get seeds for you when you come back. Okay, so this is uh, the Stock Explorer talking about who go Homestead. I just like saying it. Bunnies, a litter, a clutch. I'm not sure, but they just have baby bunnies, guys. And, um, they named them Irish names because they were born around St. Patty's Day. And Hugo Homestead told me that one of their bunnies is going to be named Nora. So I have another animal oh. named after me, guys. I'm excited. So we got a baby bunny named Nora. I'm looking forward to them. Um, Thank you so much, Cindy. So I can see which bunny it is. I feel like I'm adopting animals everywhere, guys. It's awesome. Hey, Peter Dow, welcome in. How are you, Moon, uh, Moon Over Miami? Thank you. 
so that's why I put their channel up first, guys. Steph sells stuff by the seashore is here. Thank you so much, Miss Steph. I appreciate you coming in. So Huga, it's it looks like it says Higgy, but it's pronounced Huga. Homestead is at 469 subscribers. They have 90 videos. They are a homesteading channel. Let's read their about page really quick. I'm looking forward to the update on the bunny rabbits. Hi, Chris Shirey babies. Welcome in. They are gardening, rat, having rabbits, chickens, canning, prepping, simple life, cooking, and friendly talk. Not political or too serious, just fun and friends sharing. Huga means cozy, peaceful home in Danish. This is my goal. I want to create peaceful, comfortable home. Uh, they're on Instagram at homestead.huga. And their email is hugahomesteader at gmail if you'd like to reach out uh, to them. You can look at their uh, short videos. They got their new dog, Sadie, on here on their avatar here. And lots of, uh, lots of shorts that you can watch. You can watch Sadie. So you have a million oh, dollars inside so that's your 401k. Good way, you want Whoops, to sorry about that, chicken. guys. So go check out Nora, the stock explorer. <laughs> I wonder if that gave you some ad time. <laughs> you know, and since it's, uh, wow, it's already 9 o'clock. Let me do another channel review quick. Again, it'll be short because uh, I like to showcase some channels, but not really put too much time to it. Uh, let me see. So here is Gail Southern Living. And I love Gail. Gail was one of the first people I started watching when I got on a guarding side of YouTube or more into YouTube. Um, I love her. Uh, I think she, she's she's gone through a lot of obstacles in her life, and she uses uh, crafts and gardening and, uh, you know, just to make things like keep things mentally sound in our life. Uh, cause you know, she's through a lot, a lot of people have been through a lot of things in her life. Like, where do you find peace? Where do you find, uh, something that you're really interested in to, you're like, you're in your own world. Right. And to me, water, I love watering plants. Everybody likes using sprinklers. I want to water a plant. I know I'm crazy, but that relaxes me. And well, this is what relaxes Gail, but what is she planting in 2023? Can't show the whole video, just two or three minutes. So Hi. go check out Gail. My neighbor told me that it was time to plant lettuce in my area and I'm in Texas Garden Zone 8A. So I am trying to get this bed ready. I had it protected with some leaves. So I'm trying to pull some of that off. And then if I find something that doesn't belong in here, I'm pulling that. But there's not very much of that because it's a raised planter. I mixed three different kinds of lettuce in here. And so I you can garden homestead. I got you. I'm gonna be back in a couple seconds. I'll show you a of the I'm just gonna give you a grab bag. And I'm just gonna poke holes. And you can get lettuce pretty close because I've planted lettuce before. That's crazy, Ben Genetics. 50, 50 inches of rain. I mean, that's that's legit. Until I get as many as I want in here. Now, I've already been working on this section right here. My leave it down. Okay. So I'm going to work on this section a little bit right here. Now, I did have strawberries down at this end, but I believe that I killed those or they died off. Maybe I didn't cover them enough for the winter. I'm not sure. I'm going to leave a little bit of room in case I decide to do them again log here between the two. I don't know how it got here. And it's kind of making it hard to walk between the two plants up there. Okay. Some more planted. Of course, I don't want to get these too deep. I've had these uh, raised planted. Okay, guys. So now. there's more to this, as you guys see. Really it's only two minutes them. in. Grown, uh, so check out Gail's Southern Living. And there's one thing I want to say with channels and stuff when growing a channel, because we all go through it. You reach an area where you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, right? You finally get to a place 
you started making some money, then things kind of level off. Go backwards a little bit. Don't get down on it yourself. I see it so many people, so many channels, that they stop making videos. Uh, I got to see it's for those two channels. Just look back. Just keep on going for it. And once in a while, you might find a nice gift. And you might find more people just following you off. You just, uh, just one simple video. Just never give up. Just be you. Be you. Do what you want to do. And if you need to do something different, just do something different. And try to embrace it, but show love. You know, when I look at channels, you know what I, I like to find? I, find? I like to find the family feel, you know, or a play by play. I think I knew who I'm talking about. But uh, <laughs> to me, it's almost like sports listening to these things. Um, just be you and, uh, yeah, create those little, it's the little things that really mm -hmm. attracts me. And find that something that could attract your channel to other people. Um, and always change it up just a little bit, but keep the same what you want to do. Okay, so let me see. The Garden Homestead, you won the mini bell. And disabled and prepping. I guess I didn't see anything. I'm going to give you the sunrise bumblebee tomato. Oh, thank you so much, Nora. The sunrise bumblebee tomato. And this is, I like this tomato. <laughs> I really love it. And I tell you what, when you're going to grow it in your Thrive Garden, you're going to love it because, well, you better get there early because they're going to get picked. Because when you see people see stuff in a garden like that, that's what they want to choose. So that's that's for disabled and prepping. Okay, guys, so we're giving back. You got the hot sauce from Pucker Butt. Then we're going to give this impeccable yarn. We got four of these. And then we'll end it out by three things of seeds. Uh, you got Bacon Legolette's ticket, usually after me. MB uh, Heritage Farms, usually he was doing a live after this, time, after this video around 930. But I'm not sure if he's still doing that. And later on, you have... Uh, uh, wide Family Farm, which is usually on around 11, but I'm not sure if they're doing live tonight. I did not see them in a live, and I know she's been sick, so I'm not sure. But that's who I usually follow on my Sunday night. Uh, last week's seed, just let you guys know, have not been mailed out. I'm going to be working on that very, very soon, and I'm doing that tonight after I put 72 seeds. Uh, I want to show you what I'm – I'll show you what I'm doing tonight. So these this should be pretty fast. So I use these these uh, these Jiffy uh, pellets, right? But I already did my labeling. So let's show you what I'm labeling. This was what I'm growing. So the, the first five of those. So one of three. I'm doing three uh, three P pellets. I'm doing a King Star Lemon uh, Lemon Starburst. That's by Alan Clark. And the rest of these are by from Heirloom, Heirloom, Heirloom uh, Reviews, Heirloom Reviews, and that's from 16 to 18 on. So that's some of the seeds I'm growing tonight. So that's how I label. I don't like putting stuff on top because they always get in the way. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing tonight. Then I'm going to put seeds in packets. I still got uh, – let me show you quick. I know I'm probably like, oh, get over and done with. You've been on it for two hours already. Lisa's probably saying, oh, come on, I want to go to sleep already. Um, I just want to show you stuff I do. So I label everything there. So like this is tray 20 that I already had there, and I label it like that. Look, Peter Pepper Orange. Yes, I got terrible handwriting. And then that's uh, what a hot peppers do I have left is all Jimmy Pickles. And I know I'm late, but there's like 200 seed packets there. But all everybody, everybody else is done. And then I'll start my tomatoes by next weekend. My tomatoes and everything else on ground. Okay. So hot sauce. 
impeccable yarn, seeds, and the night. Okay, we still have 89, 90 people in the chat. Thank you guys for all the donations. I got to shuffle, 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 like I love crochet said. Um, and just, uh, and if anybody wants to become a um, part of the Secret Santa 23, make sure you go to the registration video. It's done by the end of the week. And I'll start me. Uh, I'll start grouping people up. And only thing you have to do is say, uh, I'm either going gardening or crafts and crochet. You have, so you have two choices. They're all over 20. I'm, I'm sorry if that's too expensive, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then you uh, say USA or international. So I group the international people together and the USA people together. And that's it. It's pretty, that's basic. I mean, that's trying to make it as easy as possible. I'll match you up and we'll have a little bit of fun. And the winner will be winners. Well, I want everything done by July 1st. And then you could just show, hopefully you guys could show a video. So it's just something a little different. And it'll be the first hashtag for 23 for Secret Santa. <laughs> Again, thinking outside the box. Okay, let me get going here. Billy's going to fall asleep any second. I don't know who's going to fall asleep. Uh, Lisa Ladybird Loves or Bailey? I don't know. Okay, here's the wheel. So this is for hot sauce. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Oh, shuffle. Oh, no. I love like to get to them. It's for Mr. Reed. Cindy Brown. So, Cindy Brown, let us know if you want the hot sauce. And that is the pineapple ginger. So, Cindy... Cindy Brown, you want some pineapple ginger hot sauce? Let us know if you want that. You want to give this to someone else or do you want seeds? Let us know, Cindy Brown. So looking at the chat, see if she's here. I do not have a guest for next week yet, but I uh, I don't know if I'm going to mix it up or go for something new. I'm going to wait for you, Cranny, uh, for the whole thing to – Get a little better in Ukraine before I have somebody on. Um, she's someplace here. Where are you, Cindy? Wonder if she's on bathroom break. Okay, impeccable brown. Uh, this is for impeccable yarn. Impeccable brown. It's a uh, gray. So good luck. <laughs> We're looking for Cindy Brown in the chat. Oh, shuffle. Chris, oh. You know what's funny about that is Chris O is Stock Explorer's neighbor. So congratulations to Chris O. So I'm shuffling, guys. I'm going to shuffle. I'm shuffling. I'm sorry. I wish you guys could really see these names. I really got to figure out, see if I could do that better. So we're looking for Chris O and Cindy Brown. Chris O and Cindy Brown. Chris, there it is. Chris, re-gift yarn. Okay, so the yarn goes back. Actually, you know what? Chris O, I'm going to do this. Pick somebody out in the chat, and then I'll get another. Sp uh, you choose something in the somebody choose something in the chat. So choose any kind of seed you want, and uh, who you. I want you to choose somebody in the chat. So if you want the yarn, say something in the chat, and Chris O is going to pick you up, or Chrissy or Chris. So say something in the chat. Everybody say something in chat if you want the yarn. And Chris, oh, is gonna, he's gonna pick you. They're gonna pick you. You know, Chris, I never knew if you're a girl or a guy. I have no idea. I think it's a girl. 
So just give it like 20 more seconds, and Chris O or Chrissy O is going to pick out somebody in the chat. So if you really want that yarn, it's impeccable. You get four of these. Four, four, four. Kelly M. Congratulations to Kelly M. Kelly M. I think it's Kelly Minier. Please email me. You want some gray yarn. Congratulations. Okay, I'm still looking for Cindy Brown. Cindy Brown, you want some hot sauce? You want some pineapple? Uh, eh, ghost sauce <laughs> or something like that. Oh, there, I know it's hot. So, and Chris O, what kind of seeds do you want? Do you still want seeds, Chris O? So, looking for Chris O, what do you, what kind of seeds do you want? Well, oh, things are really going fast. So congratulations to Kelly Minier. And Chris, I'm just going to pop. Hey, this is be pretty cool. Chris O, you want some Dad's Sunset tomato? Dad's Sunset. So congratulations to, dad, uh, to Chris. Oh, you want some dad's sunset. The yarn will be the last gift today. This is for seeds. Seeds, seeds, seeds. Oh, there's Cindy. Cindy Brown, you want some hot sauce. Let us know if you want hot sauce, Cindy Brown. And she wants the hot sauce. Okay. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Please, seeds, seeds, seeds. Recyclable Homestead. Congratulations to Recyclable Homestead. Let us know what kind of uh, seeds do you want. Now, we got another winner of seeds here. We got you, Cindy. We got you, Cindy. Cindy. Oh, yes, please. Congratulations to Recyclable Homestead. For seeds. Now, next year. You guys are amazing. Red Silo Homestead. Red Silo Homestead's doing a lot of things in their life and uh, uh, kind of crazy at that household. Not crazy, good, that's for sure. Uh, health situations, life, a lot of things going on at Red Silo Homestead. So that's the reason why you haven't seen him in the chat. I miss him. Oh, let's see. We got a, oh my God, I can't even pronounce that. Psychedelic spell breaker. Welcome in. Welcome in. Okay, last winner of the night is impeccable yarn. It is gray. Gray. Because last winner was on oh, one second. No, Kelly Minier won that. Sorry. Oh, I almost made a mistake. Um okay, just one more thing of seeds. One more thing of seeds, and that's it. Trying to screw that up. And squirrel with Granny D. Oh, Granny D. It's funny how she always wins uh, uh, seeds. <laughs> and Granny D, I don't think she's here. Uh, I think she's still in some kind of situations. You know, one more winner, one more winner. What the heck, right, right, Kimmy? It's good to see Kimmy here. Okay, you guys are staying dry over there. I don't know if you're getting hit by all the rain. Congratulations, to Granny D. Let us know. Love Granny D. Yeah, I didn't think so. Though. Greg Bryson. So last winner of the night is Greg Bryson. Greg Bryson's always here. Hopefully he's still here, but he's usually always here. 
Anyway, guys, thank you guys for all the support. It's already 920. You guys have been here forever, and there's still 94 people in the chat. Sometimes you just want to keep on going on and on and on, don't you? Hope you guys really enjoyed the interview today. And hope you guys all learned just a little bit of something or a whole lot of something. Uh, I really enjoyed the co uh, conversation um, and answers and everything like that. So congratulations to Greg Bryson. Where are you, Greg? Um, it's funny. Greg Bryson was on a winning streak like for a whole year. And then he went on a cold streak. But now he's starting to win again. That's scary for all you guys because Bailey never wins. <laughs> anyway. Um, Love you guys so much, and uh, I appreciate everything you guys do for me. Um, and th yeah, we got people listening from India, from uh, Israel, from the UK. We have people all over the world following this chat. And uh, thanks for another Sunday fun day. Time to get me seeds plant uh, started over here. And then I could start working on other stuff to get you guys your winnings. So make sure you guys email me. Hope you guys had a good time. Hope you guys connected with a whole bunch of other channels. And be safe out there. And uh, spring's almost here. So love you guys. Have a good night. You guys are awesome. Take care.